Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be making this Smurfette. You know it's hard to see. I'm probably going to be doing something different with the mouth because I think the mouth looks stupid. But um, yeah, so we're going to be making this Smurfette doll with her little tail and her high heels. Let's get started. So I'm going to keep this a little bit dark. I turned the light down on my camera because I am going to be dealing with white for the first little bit before I get to my blue. Actually, I'm going to be dealing with white a lot throughout this video. You're going to need a four millimeter. You will need a stitch marker. I got a stitch marker right there. So we are going to start, I have a Red Heart Super Saver 4 weight worsted. <laughs> and I have a beginning. I pull it all out to make my life easier for starting a video. And I always end up trying to find the end of it. So does it really make my life easier? I don't think so. So we're going to start with a slip knot. And you're going to chain seven. So if you um, if you did my Papa Smurf with me, the shoe is exactly the same as the Papa Smurf. You're going to put two single crochets in the first stitch. You're going to single crochet four. That's up the chain. And then you're going to put four single crochets into this last stitch. Pull your slip knot closed and you're going to turn this sideways. I'm going to try to weave this in here. This is the stitch right next. This is your slip knot. Go right in there. I'm going to do four single crochets back up. I'm weaving it in my end because I don't want it to come undone. I don't want to have to deal with it. So I'm just going to weave it in and then snip it off. So when you get back up here, so we're not slip stitching or anything. You can put your stitch marker, this is where it's going to go, is right into this fourth stitch. So from here, in this weird sideways stitch, you're going to put two single crochets. It's a, it's a weird stitch and it's, it's not easy to get into. The next stitch here, which is kind of turned over a little bit, which is also not easy to get into, you're going to put two single crochets into that. So once you get past the weird stitches, this stage, your stitches should be fine. So single crochet four. two half double crochets in each of the next two stitches. So two in each stitch. Two double crochets in the next two stitches. And these next two stitches, you're going to put two half double crochets. So that's your toe part of your little footy, your little boot. 
Then you're just going to single crochet to your marker. Should be three. And that's including the marker, so that's two, and then underneath the marker is three. And generally when I do shoes or anything like this, this is how I count it. Because the marker is always going to get one single crochet. That's why I do it that way. So there's your little booty started. This round my pointer. We're going to go into the back loops only. So these back loops are standing up and they're looking right at you so they're not going to be hard to find. These are your back loops. So you're going to go just into the back loops only and you're going to single crochet around just in the back loop somewhere. So they're not hard to find. You don't have to turn your work. They're right there in front of you. So number 24 should be underneath your marker. If you don't have 24, if you have 23 or you have 25, it's no big deal. It's still going to look like a shoe. So you can always correct that in another round. So I just kind of roll it over so it's the normal way because this is going to be the inside where your thing is. This is going to be the inside of your booty. So this next round is just going to be one single crochet in each stitch round in the entire stitch. So no more of this back loop business. Go into the entire stitch and do the exact same thing you just did. And this is where if you don't have 24 you can correct it here. And 24 should be underneath your marker. So doing in the back loops takes it from a flat shoe to a, a curvy shoe. Gives you that ridge around it too. So that separates the sole from the from the shoe part. That's why we do the back loops like that. So now it should look like a little boat. So you're going to single crochet 11. We're going to start decreasing right away because it is just a tiny little shoe. So that's 11. You're going to one single crochet decrease three times. So that's one single crochet and then two together. That's number two. That's number three, and then you can single crochet four. And 
that's three. The fourth one is underneath your marker. So now you're going to single crochet 10. This is not your one. This was your four. This is your first stitch when you're counting. Which is backwards to what we normally do, but I always do this for shoes, so... I designed it, so uh, it's just the way I did it. That's ten. So I'm going to decrease four times. So it's just a simple decrease. That's one, that's two, that's three, that's four times. It really, really, really pulls it in. And then single crochet three to the marker, or two to the marker, three is under the marker. So we're going to switch colors here. But first I'm going to, one, two, three, four, five. Now one, two, three puts me about the back of the heel, so I'm going to single crochet three. I want to be someone at the back to do this color change. So get your blue handy. You're going to go into this next stitch. You can tie a slip knot and attach it too. I just keep mine up here and I grab it like I would a normal piece of yarn. So you're going to go into that stitch and you're going to make a stitch. So that would be stitch number four. We're still going to decrease one more time. From here, it's ten from here all together. So we have six. And I'm going to try to weave in my ends and grab the blue. The blue end and the white end. So I'm going to try, oh my gosh, I'm not having much luck. Try to weave in the two ends. Try to tug on that white too so you don't really see the color change. And pull that white down as much as you can. So six more from here, the hard way, because I am struggling with this for some reason. So I'll just cut it off. Four. Five and six. And then you're going to do another decrease three times. And I don't really want to take the white with me while I do it. I need another pair of scissors. So I'm going to decrease three times. So now you're just going to single crochet around the entire project, or around in each stitch, around. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. So, um, 
I am going to let you go and do your 14 rows and then you can make a second shoe and leg and then I will put my pause screen up with the patterns on there so you know what you're doing and um, I will meet you back here and we can continue. Okay, so I've got my two legs done. So before we sew them together, we should make some high heels. So grab your white. We're going to make a magic ring. We're going to put six single crochets inside that magic ring. Put it tight. You're going to do one single crochet, two single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochets, one single crochet, two single crochet. So you're going to do that three times. And then you can fasten off. That's your, that's your heel. And get into the first stitch. One single crochet. Two single crochets into this stitch. That's your first sequence, one single crochet, next stitch, two single crochets, that's sequence number two, next and last, make sure you get under two pieces of yarn, one single crochet and two single crochets in this stitch. And that's your heel, it's not much of a heel. But she just has a tiny little heel. So you can go into your next stitch, slip stitch, fasten off with enough to sew with. And then you don't need much because it's just a tiny little heel. So I'm just going to pull this tight and I'm going to tie a knot. So it will go this way, and you still have to turn it inside out. You can go into this next stitch, and you can pull your thing through. If you want it pointier, you can make it pointier. So that just gets sewn onto the bottom of the shoe like that. So figure out where you want it. Like I said, it's not much of a heel, but she does have a heel, so. So try not to pull too tight because you want to keep that shape. I personally don't like it, but what do you do? She has a she has a heel. So we can just whip up another one.
single crochet six. You can one single crochet, two single crochet, three times. Pull your tail tight, go into the next stitch and slip stitch and fasten off. With the sewing tail. So this here can just get a knot. Very hard to keep that shape, especially when you're sewing on, but that's the shape it's supposed to be. But when you sew it on, it tends to not keep the shape. Well, for me anyway. I think because I'm squishing it down with my hand. <laughs> Alright, so once we got our heels done, which mine don't even match, but anyway, that's besides the point. We are going to add, I throw my ball on the floor. We're not going to add anything, I don't know why I just said that. We are going to sew our legs together. But we need to switch colors. So I'm going to switch colors at the back. So for this one here, take your yarn around to the back and then we can switch to white so blow, pull, pull your blue down as much as you can because then your color change won't really be that noticeable. And then weave your ends in. So we're going to come back around to the front, weaving in our ends. And as far as whether the legs are going to be uneven doing this or not, once my other doll was built, you couldn't even tell. So I'm coming back around to where I started, or roughly anyway. So I'm going to cut off my blue. I'm going to get a stitch marker. I'm going to stitch marker where I want my doll to come together. Yeah. So you can decide where you want your doll to come together. I, I think that looks like it's in the center. So once you've made that decision, you can single crochet up to your marker. So now that you're up to your marker, you're going to scooch across here, 
next to your marker. Oh, sorry. First of all, once you're up to there, however apart you want your legs, now I'm going to chain three. But if you want your legs closer together, you can chain two. If you want them further apart, you can chain four. This is about how far apart a chain three gets you. That's any indication. And then you can come across to the stitch in front of that marker and put a single crochet and then single crochet back around to your color change. So we're going to move our marker. So that's the stitch right before the marker. So I'm going to pop across here, go into the stitch after them. Oh, sorry, I'm going to chain three first. Do however many chains that you've done. I'm going to chain three because that's what I did before. I'm going to pop across to this marker, or to beside the marker. Put in my single crochet. Continue back to where I started. So now you can take your marker out and you can put it in here. And that's now your new starting and stopping point. You'll be able to tell probably without the marker because of the, the look of it. And that's why we wanted it at the back. So there you have it. You're going to have a bit of a hole in your crotch here that will sew up later with the white. So when we go back to blue, we can get that sewn up. So now I don't know what your count is around here. So at this point, I can't really keep giving you numbers because your count's not going to be the same as my count. one row of one single crochet so for those that want to work ahead your next row is going to be just one single crochet in each stitch and then we're going to instantly increase for the next row for three single crochets and an increase so this row is going to be one single crochet in each stitch around for those that are working with me hard to hold at this point. So when you come back around to your stitches here, unfortunately you have to actually get into the stitches. So you have to put three, one in each of these stitches. So that could be quite awkward. Mine's actually going quite well, depending on the yarn you're using. I'm using a worsted weight yarn, so it's a lot easier to, to work with than some other yarns. Softer, it's better texture. Ooh. This one's going to be difficult because the whole thing wants to turn. I was in, I missed, came back out. Alright, one more and I'm at my marker. So like I said, your next row is going to be three single crochet and an increase. 
So you're going to do one in your marker. That's two single, three single, and then an increase of two in this stitch. So our next row is just going to be one single crochet in each stitch around. Just one single crochet in each stitch around for the next three rows. And I will meet you back on the other side. Alright, so I got my three rows done. That's what you should have. So now we're going to do a little bit of a decrease because Smurfette was not a chunky monkey. So we're going to do a decrease of basically the exact same thing that we did for our increase. <laughs> so we're going to do three single crochets and a decrease. So that's your one and your marker. Three single crochets and then your decrease. Go through the stitch, grab some yarn, don't do anything. Go to the, through the next stitch, grab some yarn, just have three loops, pull through all three. So that's your decrease. So you're just single crocheting two stitches together. So you'll see it written as SC2 TOG and that just means single crochet two together. So that's your decrease. So you do that all the way around. And then for those that are working ahead, after you're done your decrease, you're going to do three rows of single crochets in each hole. So for those working with me, three single crochets and a decrease. All right, so I've got my three rows done after my decrease. So this is what you should have. So next we're going to do two single crochets and a decrease. So there's one, two single crochets and a decrease. So we are at the back of the doll, which is where we want to be for doing our color change. And I know she seems to look awful short to start a color change, but I'll show you. This dress comes off too. You just have to unbutton it and take it off. So I'm just going to unbutton this dress. So this is why um, we're doing a color change is because I didn't go all the way up because she's wearing a dress so I just kind of made her some great big big underwear is basically what I've done so in case you were confused as to what was going on <laughs> but that is what's going on. So once we do this color change, we can sew up the crotch so we can put some stuffing in here. 
we're still going to do um, decreases after the color change. So. Get our new color. Go back to blue. This is not a new color, but get our color. I am going to go into the next stitch. And instead of picking up my white, I'm going to pick up the blue, make a stitch. When I pull down on the white, it drops down, so you shouldn't really notice the, the color change big time. So we're going to do two rows of single crochets with the blue, and then we're going to decrease again. So two rows with the blue, and I will meet you back here when we're done. All right, that is my two rows of blue. Let me take a little bit of white and I'm going to sew up this crotch. So, take a slip knot on one end of your white. Pull your thing out so you don't lose your loop so we it's going to be very hard to show you so go into the white of the on the side of the leg and then you're going to go through your slip knot and then pull as tight as you can with both pieces so it makes a very 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 small knot and then you're going to simply whip stitch. So you're going to go through that little bit of, and that little bit. So you're going to go through these two pieces of yarn and only those two pieces of yarn. You go through any more of that. I'm not sure how I just picked all this up. Picked up the blue. And you're going to do that all the way across. You're going to go stitch to stitch. It's very hard to show you on camera. But if you not already know how to whip stitch, then that's fabulous. And make sure you get in that side of the leg. And that is how you sew up a crotch. So once you're done, go in really close next to your thing so it looks like a stitch. Now you're not going to be able to weave because you are coming out in blue, but you can just pull through and cut off. And of course the same thing with your tail. You're just going to go down, making sure that knot's nice and tight. Go down into the white right next to it. Go down into the stuffing because you kind of just want this to get lodged in the stuffing. Cut that off and your crotch is all sewn up. Alright, so We're going to decrease again, 
And we're going to do one single crochet in a decrease. So your one single crochet is going to be what's under your stitch marker. And then your decrease. One single crochet. And a decrease. Okie dokie. So, now you're really, really skinny. You got about 14 stitches. Um, you can start putting stuffing in this. I like to just pull mine apart before I put it in. Um, reason being is I don't want it to be clumpy. So, I know it seems like a small hole, but It'll all go in there. You could have you could have stuffed this at any time you wanted to. Um, once we sewed the crotch up, but so once we get this a little bit stuffed, we are going to start to um, increase. Make sure this really gets down to the top of that leg. Don't want to overdo it because it will be hard to hold on to. So this is where we are on the doll. So we're going to start to increase for her head at this point. So I think that's good enough for the stuffing for now. So. For your next round, you're going to put two single crochets in each stitch around. After your first one, you're going to put the marker. Then you can put your second one in that same space. So two single crochets in each stitch around. So you should have a total of 28 when you come around to the other side. If you don't, that's fine because your numbers could be different because of how you sewed your legs together. Or how you sewed your, yeah, sewed your, I mean, crocheted your legs together. So we're going to continue to increase. It's going to get pretty squishy. I'm just going to put that in my mouth, but it's so hard to talk. So, we're going to do three single crochets in an increase. So, that's your first one. Three single crochets, and then two in this hole. So you should have 35 if you're following along with me. Or you might have 36, 37, 33, 32. Uh, again, doesn't matter. As long as you stay on track with your numbers, then you should be you should be fine. I mean, whatever numbers that you're doing, because like I said, I don't know what you did here for leg spacing. So this um, is going to be another increase row because we want a nice round head. So it is going to look funny. This one you're going to do four single crochets and an increase. At the end of it you should have 42 stitches. We're going to 49. So those that are, want to work ahead, your next row is going to be five single crochets and an increase. That'll be your last increase for those that are working with me. Four single crochets and an increase. That's your first one is your marker. Okay. 
That's four single crochets and then two in this hole. And repeat. I'm sure I put two in that other stitch over there. So, like I said before, your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. This is your last increase. And then those that are working ahead of me, it, your next round is going to be one single crochet. And every stitch around for 49 stitches, if that's what you have, if you're on track with me. For those working with me, five single crochets and an increase. So that's your number one. Well, I've got 50 stitches. So I'm not even on track with myself, which is fine. No big deal. We're gonna start decreasing. So we're going to do five single crochets and a decrease. And for those that want to work ahead, we're going to do five, four, three. And then we're going to do a row of one single crochets. Then we're going to do two and a decrease. And then again, one single crochet. So those that want to work ahead of me, you know what I'm talking about. So do your five, four, three decrease. For those working with me, five single crochets and a decrease. That's your one. That's five single crochets. And your decrease. Repeat. Five single crochets. And a decrease. So your next row. I know that looks really funny right now, but trust me, trust me. Four single crochets and a decrease. And that is your number one. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and a decrease. And you're going to do two single crochets and a decrease. So that's your first stitch. Get off. Piece of white. <laughs> that's your second stitch. And then your decrease. I have 21 stitches. So, 
we're gonna let this funny headed person go for a minute and let's get our white back out so make a slip knot you're gonna chain five you're gonna put a single crochet in the first stitch single crochet in the next stitch you're going to put a half double crochet into the next stitch and then you're going to put four half double crochets into the last stitch pull your slip knot tight Try to weave it in if you can. This your knot, your slip knot. So right into this next stitch, you're gonna put half double crochet, and you're gonna put a single crochet into the next stitch, and then right in this next stitch, you're just gonna grab some yarn, slip stitch, and fasten off. I weave this in so I'm just gonna snip that off so we made it just like our Papa Smurf absolutely exactly the same I'm just gonna snip him off because I weaved him in if you didn't weave him in you're probably gonna have to tuck it tuck that away or do something with it so there's our eyes and uh, we're going to attach those in a minute. I need to do uh, another another row. Let's do one more row of one single crochets in each stitch around for 21 stitches. And then we'll put our eyes on. That's my 21. So we can put some stuffing on after. But you need to go get some safety eyes. So I'm just going to use the 8mm eyes just like I did for Papa Smurf. I think they're an okay size. don't want them too too huge because she's got a tiny head. By the way, you can find these eyes, this kit, on Amazon. Um, mine's Canadian so you'll have to go to Amazon.com. Um, Canadian dollars. This was um, $15.99, I think it was. $16, bucks, $15. Bucks. That's Canadian dollars, so. But you get noses too. So you get these different noses. And then you get the little black safety eyes. And then you get the colored safety eyes, which are super, super cool. So. For $15. Bucks. And you get, then you get all the backs. So these are the backs that go on to this. And you can't get them off. So once they're on, they're on. You can't change it. So that's what makes them safety eyes. Because they're not ever going to fall off your doll and into your child's mouth. So get your little white parts. 
figure out, of course, I'm just going to go in the biggest hole that's there. Because it's easy. So, same as Papa Smurf, if you followed me there, we're just going to figure out where to attach them. So, initially, I wrote down in my little computer that I did third and between the third and fourth row from the top. So, one, two, three, four. So, that's the third and fourth row. Make sure you're at the front of your doll by your feet. And then just figure out where you're going to put these in. I want these really close together. I don't really want any spaces. I think I gotta move over though. So that seems like it could be. Not that easy to get on and to stay in that. Looks like it's the center of my body. So I will put my backs on but like I said make really sure that you want them here because you can't take these off once the backs are on. I have to just toss the doll away and start over. So once you figure out where you want them it's up to you whether you want to sew your eyes on or not. Right now they are sticking up over the lip. Uh, I did not. So my eyes are not sewn on up there. I basically, because my safety eyes are holding it in place, I basically took this, I shoved it through the doll's head and I tied it at the back. That's all I did. So it's reaffirmed, attached, but the backs of the safety eyes, they really get in the way of uh, trying to sew these eyes on anyway. And I really just don't think you, they need to be sewn on. So I just sort of shove it through to the back and that kind of secures them. Make sure they're where you want them to be, or how you want them to be. And then I just tied a knot, which again, you don't need because the safety eyes are holding them on. So you don't even really need that much, but I don't want them turning either. So, because you can still turn these white parts, which you'll have to try to get. I didn't spend enough time on Papa Smurf's eyes and ended up screwing them up on my second doll that I made. My first stuff always turns out way better than my second stuff that I make on camera and I think it's because I just try to rush through it. And I don't know why I do that but... Now I'm not really super happy with her as far as her mouth so I think I'm gonna change that. I just don't know how. I didn't know what kind of mouth to put on her but after I put this on I mean, I, to make the video, I left it, but I'm going to totally change this mouth because I absolutely hate this mouth. So, I think we're just going to do a simple, a simple, simple mouth. Papa Smurf was easy because basically his beard covered everything, so it was no big deal. So, not a whole lot of room um, for the nose. So, I think I'm just going to make a tiny little, little mouth. Uh... You, we don't have to worry about this now. We can put the mouth on after. So if you want to give your neck and your head a stuffing, then we can continue. So make sure you really get down into that neck area. You don't want a wobbly head, that's for sure. Not that the kids are really going to care. My kids are just going to love this. My, my grandkids will. Don't even know if they know who the Smurfs are. I do know you can buy um, the Smurf movie on DVD, but 
As far as the cartoon, I don't know if it's even on TV anymore, to be honest. I have no idea. So just take your fingers and try to get out to the outside of the head. So you want to make sure our head is nice and round. It does look better once the nose and stuff go on. <laughs> right now, it looks pretty funny. But you want to keep it round. I think that's all the stuffing I'm going to do. I'll do some more stuffing after. So, back to Little Miss Fancy Pants. We're going to do, we're going to start decreasing. So, I saw it could be a huge whole lot to decrease. Because she's just got a tiny little head. Just a tiny little smurf. So we're going to do one single crochet and decrease. So that's pretty aggressive. That was my one single crochet. So I go right into a decrease. So we just got this just above the eyes. We're going to do one single crochet around and then we're going to decrease again. And that will give you room for the little bit of hair. And so this hair only goes, it's hard to show you, right here. That's as far as the hair goes. I didn't do the hair on top of the whole head. So, one single crochet in each stitch around, and then we'll decrease six times and sew the rest of the head up. So, for those working ahead of me, for those working with me, one single crochet in each stitch around. So, I didn't write a number down here, but... I got 13 stitches. I don't know if that's right or not. It doesn't matter. So, so decrease six times and then we'll sew the rest of the head up and uh, we're good to move on. So you're just right into decreases. There's no single crochets. That's one. And it doesn't matter how silly your head looks. Make sure you have enough for sewing. I'm going to put a little more stuffing in. Because I always do at this point. And then, um, and then we'll go ahead and sew up our doll. I just want to make sure she has a nice round head. So get your doll to where you, you're absolutely happy with it. 
so when we sew this top shut, you are going to be fine with how it is. Sorry, I know. Really close to the camera. It's hard when the dolls get bigger to not be so close to the camera. So once you're satisfied, go to your next stitch. Do a slip stitch. Fasten off. So, you can move the stuff in around after and shape the head. So you're going to go into this stitch here, and then you're going to come out that stitch there. And you're going to do the same all the way around, in and out. One more time, in and out, or back to your, your knot. So you just want to pull tight. doesn't matter what the top of the head looks like because it's going to be hot there. So at this point you can just weave in and out. All different directions. Go in as close as you can to where it came out. That way it's just going to look like a stitch. you saw that I don't know if you saw that really close to my camera <laughs> anyway weave in and out until you're happy that it's not going anywhere I'm probably a little over cautious I like to weave in and out a lot but I don't want this coming apart on my grandkids so I'm extra cautious so you can play with her head, make it round. She looks very funny right now, but she looked really funny when I first made her too. So to avoid continuing with this funniness, let's make her nose. my dolls on top of my yarn. Alright. So the nose is a magic ring. It's really quick because it's so small. So single crochet, single crochet. Boy, I have a tough time with that word. Eight into the ring. That's eight. Pull it shut. So easy peasy. One single crochet in each stitch around for four rows. Easy peasy. So you can just count to eight. You don't need to use your marker. Four rows would make it 32. If you want to count to 32. So there's 16, that's two rows. I'm going to pull my tail and I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to make a knot. So now before we continue, you need to turn this right side in before it gets too difficult. I just shape it around your hook 
so that that's at the top. And then I can do my two more rows. So that's all my rows. I'm going to go into the next stitch in a slip stitch and I'm going to fasten off with a sewing tail. So you want to go into this next stitch and pull that through. It just gives it a better look for when you do sew it on. So we will sew that on right now so that we can get this mouth done and out of the way. So find a pen or something to keep this in place. But you're literally gonna sew it right under the eyes like that. So find something that you can use to hold it in place. I'm just using another needle. And please don't take sewing lessons from me because I suck. However, you know what? I want to put some stuffing in this. Pretty sure I put stuffing in my other nose. So her nose didn't collapse. Like kids throwing it on the ground or whatever, you know. Pretty 90% certain I put stuffing in the other nose. So you just need to squish that down in there. That's better. It even feels better. So I'm going to put my little end where I fastened off. I'm going to put hit that at the bottom because I don't really want people to see it. So touch your nose to wherever you're going to sew it on. There's a number of different ways you can attach this nose. You can do invisible stitches which is coming up really close to the nose going into it. I've showed it on other videos. Um, there is an easier way to just sew this on. I'm just going to go down into the nose. You need an extra long tail for, not extra long, but you need a decent sized tail to do it this way, but uh, at the end of the day, it's way easier. So this right here, I'm going to go in as close as I can to it. So when I pull through, it's just going to look like a stitch and then I'm going to come up into the nose. So when I pull, hopefully this is on camera, it's just going to look like a stitch. So I'm not going to pull tight this way, but when I go back down into the nose and I pop out somewhere, if I can get into it, <laughs> I get into the nose. And again, try to keep it as close as you can to wh where you just came up because you want that to look like a stitch too. So when I come back down, now I can pull tight. So my nose is tight, but I can't pull tight this way because you'll end up with a divot in the side of your head. So I'm going to come up into the nose. This is the easiest way to do it how I did it with the ears and I found it so super simple. So again I'm coming to, down in as close as I can to the other piece of yarn. Sorry I can't do it like that. It's hard to do on camera so I can't turn it the way I want to turn it. And I'm just going to pop out the side of his face and refix my nose because it turned. 
And this is where I can give it a nice tug. And then back, back into it at the bottom here. So I pulled a little too tight there. I got a bit of a divot, but not a huge big deal. So I'm going to go back down into the doll. And I give it a nice snug pull. So that's how you sew the nose on. So once you're done, you've gone full circle, you can just weave the rest of your yarn in and around. This is where I like to tie a knot. Because I don't want that yo nose to be able to get yanked off. So I'm just going to tie a knot as close as I can get it to the doll. But I mean it's not super important because once the knot's there, just cut off a little bit of yarn. The rest of it you're going to push down into that stuffing. So it gets lodged in there. So if somebody does try, if a kid comes along and tries to pull the nose off, that knot is lodged into the stuffing so it won't go anywhere. So my nose might be a little off center because it was moving. That needle really didn't hold it in place that well. Like I said, every time I do a doll on camera, it turns out different than my other doll. So we need to get some black. And of course I don't have some here so I'll be back in a Alright, I got some black. So, I don't know what mouth we're doing, so I can't really tell you how big to make it. But what I can tell you is to tie a knot in one end. Same concept as when we're weaving. This is going to get shoved down into the doll. It's going to get lodged. So get our needle um so I'm not sure what kind of mouth I think I'm just gonna do a simple mouth so come up in the chin part wherever you think your chin part is come up wherever see I don't want to make it big again wherever you want your mouth to be. You can figure out how long you want your mouth to be. I don't know, it's kind of a plain Jane mouth. She's not smiling or anything. But we can, we can put a little smile, Let's see if we can put a little smile on her face. Go up into the one just above that. Don't copy me. I don't really know what I'm doing. This may look horrible. A little bit of a smile. Yeah. So when you go to push this, push this down to cut, so it pops back in. And then this little goatee looking thing, which is super funny right now. You can just jam that right up into the stuffing so that knot gets stuck in there. And nobody will be none the wiser. That mouth is a little bit better than the other mouth I did. <coughs> Let's compare it. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> Not as stupid looking. So, fix the head a little bit. Head's a little distorted. <coughs> so, let's make the hat. But we are going to be putting the hair 
on first. So you can get your hair ready. So these dowels you measure the stall out of the way. They're like half an inch? I don't know. It looks like it says one inch. They're big for hair. And that's what's going to give you straight hair but wavy hair. Does that make sense? So that's what this hair was made on one of these dowels. And it just gives it a little bit of a wave at the back. But for the most part, it's straight. So that's how I made her hair. Actually, these were the very same ones because I just made a whole crap load because I knew I was doing a video. So wrap your hair. These are already cooked, so I don't have to cook these or anything. But um, we'll, we'll make the hat while yours are cooking. So... I'm going to put my pause screen up so whenever you're ready you can continue. Take your yarn, whatever color that you're using, and wrap it around the dowel. You're going to have to tie knots at both ends unless you have notches, but you can buy dowels. You can buy a package of uh, assorted sizes at Michael's or, or I'm sure any craft store, whichever you have in your area. So you wrap the hair doesn't have to be tight just has to be wrapped around the, do the dowel and you're going to you're going to soak it in water for about five minutes just to make sure it's I mean you can spray it with your spray hose or whatever make sure it's soaking wet and it's soaked up a lot of water so you want the yarn nice and wet you're going to put it in your oven on a rack the rack the the cooking sheet needs to have a rack on it because this can't sit on the cooking sheet because it'll burn on the one side so your cookie sheet has to have a rack put these soaking wet pieces on your rack and you're gonna you're gonna cook them at 250 degrees for about 45 minutes and then I'll show you what to do after while those are cooking we can whip up the hat so I'm gonna put my pause screen up so whenever you're ready you can come back and join me okay so let's start with the hat now that you've got your hair going I'm using a five millimeter hook or an H hook you're gonna need your white We're going to make a magic ring. You put eight single crochets inside this magic ring. Pull that shut. You're going to start with one single crochet, two single crochet all the way around. So one single crochet and then increase right off the hop because we want a nice point. And that's how we're going to get a point. So there's one single crochet. In the next stitch, you're going to put two single crochets. So that's your increase. So you should have a total of 12 stitches. And now you're going to do three rows of single crochets. You can tie this in a knot like we always do, just so you know it's not going to come undone. 
most people just weave it in and I like to just get rid of it all together. So if you can't manage to get the knot up close enough, you can weave it in at that point because it might still come open, but I don't like to cut it down next to the knot. Too much of an invitation to come undone. So three rows of one single crochet in each stitch around. And I shall meet you back here after we're done. So I've got my three rows done and that's what it should look like. Just like that. So we're going to increase. Put your first stitch in with your marker. So we're going to do two single crochets and increase. This is your first one. So we'll do another one and then your increase. Two in the same hole. So you should have 15 stitches. And we're going to do three single crochets and an increase. So because this is such a small doll, we're going to increase really fast. So those that want to work ahead of me, this will be three single crochets and an increase. Your next round will be four single crochets and an increase. And then just a straight one single crochet in each stitch around. For those working with me, this is your first stitch and three single crochets and then two in this hole for an increase. And try to keep your work loose. This is supposed to be a sloppy, sloppy kind of a hat. Which is why I went up a needle size. And uh, so just try to keep your, your work loosey-goosey. And the next round is four single crochets and an increase. The so next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's five single crochets and an increase. Still increasing. Next two rounds, for those working ahead of me, this round's going to be seven single crochets and an increase. Your next round's going to be eight. And then at that point, we're going to be done. And there we go. Funny looking hat. You can fasten off. Fasten off with a super long tail for sewing. 
again and go into your next stitch. Pull this sucker through. There. Funny, funny looking hat. And I'm going to make it even funnier by putting some stuffing right at the end of it. <laughs> there. It's your Smurf hat. So your hair should be cooked. It should be nice and cold. So you just need to remove it. Pull it off the, all your sticks. You don't have to be nice about it. It's not, uh, you can stretch that out. It'll all go back into shape. So get all the hair off your sticks and I'll meet you back here and show you what to do next. All right, so I unraveled four dowels. So we'll see if that is going to be enough. So we tied knots so you can either cut them off or pull them off. Each end. We're just going to get my workbook. So you're going to wrap your hair around here. doesn't really have to be tight. You don't have to pull tight. Just wrap it. Don't be like Tara. Alright, so I do have a knot still in the end of this. I'm just going to get rid of it before I lose where it is. So once you've got it wrapped, you're going to take your scissors and you're going to cut right down the middle. And that's your hair. So that's what it's going to look like. So we're going to do that for every single piece of hair. And uh, I will meet you right back here after you're done. And uh, we'll start putting some on. All right. This is easier to do without arms. That's why I'm doing it without arms. So you're basically, I mean, your hat's going to cover most of this area. So it's going to sit on the hair. So you basically want to put hair all up in here and then around. I'm going to use my my little hook rug hooking hook so you just want to start shoving the hair on there However you want to attach the hair, if you have a rug hooking hook, it is a lot easier to do it. If you don't, you'll have to use your hook hook. So other than that piece, we're basically going to take the hair and we're going to swoop it. Make sure it's under the hat when we sew it and then we can just pull it out to make that swooping look. But you still need hair all along here. So once you've got enough in the front that you think is enough, you can still go behind the eyes a little bit too.
So that's how his hat's going to sit. So you can put some more hair down here if you want. Just to make it look fuller. So there's a couple of ways. This part, I know it's probably so hard to see. This part, I want to make sure there's a bunch of hair up underneath this hat when I do this. So pull it down as close to the eyes as you can. Because that's how she wears her hat. That's how they all wear their hat. But we don't want to not position this properly. I need some needles to hold this in place. So you just take a couple of needles or pins or whatever you got to hold the hat in place. And we have to sew around the hair. I'm going to sew because I want to try to keep this ridge for the hat. Just make sure wherever you're sewing that the hair is in place and how you like it. Hair seems to be fuller over here. Oops, sorry. Make sure your hair is how you want it before you start sewing because you're going to go right down into the doll. So make sure you're in the doll's head. So as long as the hat is attached, you can do big stitches because It's not going to go anywhere. A nice snug pull. So I'm going down, of course, again, as close to this as I can. So it just looks like a stitch. But once I get into the doll's head, I'm doing fairly large stitches. Because, I mean, every single ounce of the hat doesn't have to be sewed to her head. As long as some of the hat is sewn to her head. Now keep in mind, she's getting ears too. So the ears are also going to go over the hair a little bit. Try to keep this loose up here. I pulled it too tight on Papa Smurf when I made him and it looks stupid. So make sure you got the swoop that you want in your hair before you completely sew it down. So the smile certainly looks a lot better than my other one. Oops. So you can give her hair a trim if you need to give her hair a trim, but right now you just want to make her hat floppy look, and that's the whole point of putting the stuffing up there so you can adjust her hat. So I could put way more hair on the other on the other one. I think the mouth is a lot better on this one. So the head doesn't look as big because I don't have as much hair, but you can decide how much hair you want. I mean, if you did, 
if you got extra hair laying there and you want to still keep putting it on you can still keep putting it on um, I will do that after the video I'll just continue to add where around the ear and stuff like that but for the video I'll just leave it 